Hi there. Welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. I went to a dark site 10 days ago and managed to have a one hour exposure of Messier 101 with my new telescope before the batteries gave up, of course. And today, rather than show you the shooting process, I'll show you my subs, then my quick and dirty uh, post-processing workflow to achieve a reasonable result with minimum effort. First of all, I'm using the blink function in PixInsight to go through my subs. Let's go to the menu and in the process, all processes and uh, choose blink. Okay, I already uh, chose all the luminous uh, frames here. Uh, what you should do is just hit uh, the very first one. And uh, normally I will do two batches of uh, all these frames. Batch number one, I will qu quickly go through with 100% magnification like this. Okay, now I can see the star dots. I know the star dots are not perfect here. It's a combination effect of uh, tracking and collimation issues. I'm fixing them now and uh, hopefully I will make some other videos to talk about it. But it looks not too bad here. I will click on the blink window. I'm using the down button on the keyboard to go through all the subframes quickly. And if there's any problem in the sub, like this one, number 16, I have an airplane uh, track. So I will remember the number and exclude it for the next process. So let's go on. Okay, I found the subs are generally good, uh, no guiding tracking issues. Uh, and the second round, I will look at the full frame like this and uh, go through it again to see uh, what's the airplane tracks or satellite tracks. Like we mentioned on the 16th, there's a airplane. So I will just uh, like this one. Uh, yeah, I will exclude it. And uh, the others are good. Okay, on frame number two, there is a airplane uh, track on the edge and uh, I don't think it's a big deal. I'll just keep it for the moment. Okay, that's it for step number one. Let's move on to step number two, stacking. I'm using this great software Astro Pixel Processor to do all my stacking these days. It's a very powerful uh, software. It's not free, but it's way better than the free softwares. I will introduce all my lights here by clicking this light and uh, here are my luminances remember i need to exclude number 16 okay and there we go so there's a number here uh, 21 means you have 21 uh, light frames and of course i need my darks too for luminance i didn't bing so i will pick the one by one frames but same time, I had both 30 seconds and 60 seconds exposures. But I don't need to process them separately. I only choose all of them and open. And uh, you see here, there's exposures of uh, 36 and uh, 66. APP will be very intelligent here. It will process two master dark frames and use them against each light frame according to their uh, exposures correspondingly. So I don't need to do anything here. I will just go to the uh, integrate because that's what I should do and uh, go all the way down to the bottom and hit this integrate button. There are tons of uh, variables or parameters you can change here but i always use the default it takes some time let's fast forward a little bit now it's done Let's go down, all the way down, and we see that there are two master docs, and there's the final integration file. 
we can click it to enlarge a little bit to see the details and uh, yeah so far it looks good this is the luminance frame i should also process the rgb channels too same process for step number one and two just three more times let me fast forward again and uh, now we have uh, four masters for each channel and uh, i'll open them in pixing site Here we have the L and R and G and B. All of them are here. I will do a on-screen stretch for the blue channel first. And you can see that there is a, a gradient uh, caused by light pollution probably. I will have to do a background extraction to get rid of the gradient. I will go to the menu and choose process or processes and uh, i will use the automatic background extractor it's very handy it's almost completely automatic i only need to make sure that uh, the correction here is a subtraction because it's light pollution we don't need we don't use division we use a subtraction to reduce the gradient here so i'll drag this uh, triangle and it becomes a box and drop it to a uh, frame and it will first generate a pattern frame for the gradient and then it will do the subtraction and uh, come up with the final frame this looks great uh, there's no gradient anymore i will keep it there minimize and i will continue with the others so i can close this one okay so everything is automatic you just do the same thing again and again and uh, it will be corrected automatically now i have these four files corrected for background gradient step number four i'm coming back to app and i need to normalize all these uh, master frames of the four channels so here i clear everything and I need to introduce the lights again. This time it's a file that I saved with the fixing size just now because they are corrected for the gradients. Then I just need to go to the step number five, normalize and hit this button. It will again start automatically to do everything. So the normalize function in APP comes very handy for channel combinations. First, it calibrates and aligns stars in these master frames, even if they are in different sizes. Uh, in my case, uh, my L master is not binged and my RGB masters are binged two by two. It will take care of it automatically. Second, it normalizes the background and the highlights so that your combined picture will have a pretty good white balance. Now it's done. I only need to save the normalized frames. And four new files has been generated. Okay, now we can go directly to step number five. Use the tools menu and there's the combined RGB functionality. This is a pretty uh, straightforward tool. We only need to hit add and choose four of the last frames we processed, these normalized uh, frames. Here, we only need to tell it which, uh, which channel it belongs to. So this is B, so it's blue and OK. And this is G, so it's green. And L is for luminance. And the last one is the red. Okay. There are a lot of uh, variants you can change, but uh, as a, again, I always use the default. So I will just uh, hit the calculate. And voila, this is the final RGB picture generated by APP. And uh, I need to do some further process in Photoshop. 
So here I need to check this stretch and hit save. Photoshop accepts only the TIFF format. So I should make sure that here I choose the TIFF as a format. And uh, this I will just take the default. Here you need to make a choice of 8 bits, 16 bits, and uh, 32 bits. I would suggest to choose 16 because Photoshop supports maximum 16 bits. Okay, I think the file is there. Next step, number six. We will go to Photoshop and uh, open the file. It still looks good, right? Let's do a crop on this. There's uh, some red and green lines at the edge. So let's get rid of them. I think that's good. And then I will do some levels to make the background darker because there's not much signal on this side. And then I'll adjust the curves a little bit. Like this. And I will do some vibrance and saturation to pick up the color. I like vibrance more because it's more subtle. Uh, and the saturation is a bit strong. So I'll just keep it a little bit up there. I think this is already a pretty decent picture, but I will give it some final touch in my iPad because I found that the screens on iPad and the mobile phones are generally better than my monitor and uh, they have better color and uh, more dynamic range. So I want to process my final light and the noise adjustment on a mobile device to get the most out of it. The application that I use is Lightroom and the settings are quite straightforward. I'll start with the exposure and then contrast and then highlights and shadows. And the last but not least is the noise reduction. I need to magnify it pretty much to see all the subtleties. Like I said, the dynamic range of uh, iPad is much better and uh, what I feel here is a much darker background. Finally, I will save this picture to my camera roll with the maximum resolution and uh, it's done. Okay, let's wrap up. I start the whole process with PixInsight's blink function to review all the subs and exclude bad ones. Then I used APP to do stack. Then go back to Pixing site again for background reduction, that's called ABE. Afterwards, I use APP again for normalizing different channels and combine RGB. Afterwards, I do some Photoshop adjustment on computer and the Lightroom adjustment on iPad to make my final frame look better. This is the final result. I find the color of stars and the details of galaxy quite amazing. And uh, it's definitely my best shot for M101 so far. I believe that alone justifies my six hours drive to the dark side. That's not bad for a first light either, right? So hope you enjoy it and this video as well. And I will see you next time.